This video will detail the graphing of quadratics in standard form or vertex form. In front of us, we have a quadratic in standard form on the left and a quadratic in vertex form on the right. In fact, for this video, I am using the exact same function. These are two ways of showing the same quadratic. And just to prove to you quickly they're the same, I'm going to expand the equation or the expression on the right. Um, to do this, I'm going to multiply x minus 4 squared. Don't forget that that means x minus 4 times x minus 4, which require us to FOIL. I won't show all those FOILing steps, but you can easily verify that this multiplies into x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus 9. And then I distribute this negative through to get negative x squared plus 8x minus 16 plus 9. Final step is just to combine the negative 16 and the positive 9 here to get negative x squared plus 8x minus 16. Oops, sorry, minus 7. So, as you can see, that's exactly the same as the, the function on the left. Now what I'm going to do is talk about how to analyze these functions in their specific forms. But I want to emphasize these are both quadratics just written in two different ways. There are different reasons for having either one of these two forms. Fundamentally, it's easier to create equations with the vertex form on the right. A lot of real world applications like projectile motion uh, are inherently written in standard form um, on the left. As I provide an explanation of the process, I'm going to show uh, the actual graph here on the right. I think it will help you understand uh, the steps that we're doing. All right, I'm going to go through these five steps uh, right here. First and foremost, we can easily identify concavity. This is whether we have an upward or downward facing parabola. All quadratics, by the way, become parabolas when graphed. In this case, our a value is equal to negative 1. The a value is the lead coefficient, or this number in front of the x squared. If it's negative, or less than 0, as described up here, we have a downward facing parabola like this. That's useful to know when we go about doing the rest of the work, but doesn't really help too much. Number two, we can easily find the y or vertical intercept in standard form. We analyze the c value, or c coefficient, in this case it's negative 7. Um, as said here, our y-intercept is always just 0, our c value, or in this case 0, negative 7. As you can see in this graph on the right, that verifies uh, the point right there on the y-axis. Okay. Number three, we want to find our zeros or our roots for this function, also called x-intercepts. We do that by solving the equation 0 equals negative x squared plus 8x minus 7. We're solving this, this we're asking when does this function output a 0, um, and we're going to find those x values. There's multiple ways of doing this. In fact, we could do this by factoring, we could do it with the quadratic formula, or we could do it by completing the square. I'm going to do it by factoring. The first trick I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything by a negative 1, mainly to get this coefficient in front of the x squared to be positive. So I multiply both sides of this equation by a negative 1. I get 0 equals x squared minus 8x plus 7. Then I'm going to factor this to solve by factoring. And uh, this will factor into um, x minus 1 and x minus 7. That gives me two solutions when I set each of those factors equal to 0 of x equals 1 and 7. That gives me the two points where this parabola crosses the x-axis, which can be verified by these two points over here on the right. 7 comma 0 and 1 comma 0. Again, those are outputs of 0 given the input of a, set, or a 7 and a 1. Step uh, four, 
we're going to find the vertex. The vertex uses this negative b over 2a formula. So to find the x value of our vertex, we plug in uh, our negative b, so negative 8 in this case, b being this linear coefficient, times 2 times a, a is negative 1. When I calculate this, this becomes negative 8 over negative 2, giving us a positive 4. That's the x value. To find the y value of our vertex, we simply plug that 4 back in and figure out what the function gives us. I'll plug that in. I got 4 squared plus 8 times 4 uh, minus 7. And that will come out to 9. So we get our vertex is at x equals 4 and the output is 9. That relates to this point right here. The vertex is one of the most important parts of a parabola. It determines this maximum or minimum value. In this function, what we just found out, since it's a downward facing parabola, our vertex is at 4, 9. 9 is the highest value that can be output by this function. That means that we, couldn't, we can't plug in any number into this function and get out something bigger than 9. 9 is the largest number that comes out from this function. That's how it relates to this graph right there. As you can see, that's the peak, and every other x value I plug in is less than that. For instance, at 1 and at 7, I'm at 0. If I plug in a 0, I get a negative 7. That's what I just found out. Last thing right here is this thing called the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is this straight vertical line. In this case, that's at x equals 4. The, x, the axis of symmetry is an imaginary line that goes vertically down the vertex right here, down the middle of our line. The statement about the axis of, of symmetry is just that our graph here is symmetrical about this line. That if I went a certain number of units this way and found this point, the corresponding point is the same number of units the other way. That's important in some contexts. It's just important to understand that our, our parabola is symmetrical about that axis of symmetry. Again, the axis of symmetry is an equation x equals and has the same value um, as our vertex right there. I'm now going to go through the same analysis, but in vertex form. Vertex form will offer us different information uh, and we will attack it in different ways, but we'll get all the same points out. In vertex form, um, we have the same first move. Um, we find this a value. The a value is the coefficient in front of the parentheses here. And this is always the same, actually, with standard form. In this case, our a value is negative 1, which again means that our, our parabola is the downward facing or concave down. Second, we want to find the y-intercept. Um, the y-intercept is at 0 comma f of 0, meaning the y-intercept is what we get when we plug in 0 to our function, and all we need to do is plug in 0 to the function up here. So I have g of 0. I get uh, negative 0 minus 4 squared plus 9, which will give me negative uh, 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. This comes out to be negative 16 plus 9, which gives me a negative 7. So there, I have a vertical intercept of 0, negative 7. Again, if you think about standard form, that takes a little bit more work because you actually have to plug in the 0, um, but it doesn't take too long to actually compute that. Number 3, I want to find the vertical or the horizontal intercepts or the zeros of this function. I need to solve the equation 0 equals negative x minus 4 squared minus, or sorry, plus 9. I'm going to do that over here on above this graph on the left. So I'm solving 0 equals negative x squared minus 4 squared plus, minus 9. Oh, plus 9, excuse me. I want that to be a negative. Very bad for some reason. Plus 9. I could expand this and turn it into a standard form using a quadratic formula. But easier, um, I actually can just solve this using the square roots. I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides to get negative 9 equals negative 
x minus 4 squared. I'm going to divide by negative 1 on both sides to get rid of the negative in front of the parentheses here to get 9 equals x minus 4 squared. Apply the square root to both sides. On the left hand side that would give me a plus or minus 3 equals x minus 4. The square root takes out this square right here. And to get my solutions, I would add 4 to both sides. So what I get is x equals 4 plus or minus 3. And when I do those two operations, uh, 4 plus 3 would give me a 7, and 4 minus 3 gives me a 1. Again, what I found out are these two numbers are the numbers I plug in to get a 0 out of my function. Those refer back to these points, 7, 0 right here, and 1, 0. I should note that previously in the second step, I had found this y-intercept by plugging in 0 and getting out negative 7. Last uh, is the easy part we can get from this vertex form. Uh, so number four, we get our vertex form not from doing any deep calculations, but they're directly from the numbers um, in our function. That's why this is called vertex form. The vertex is at h comma k. The h value is the value being subtracted from the x up here, so x minus h, and the k is the number being added over here. If we analyze those, uh, we would get that the vertex is at 4, 9, which can be verified by this point 4, 9 right there. And as stated before, the axis of symmetry is just this straight vertical line that runs through the vertex, giving me that I have a axis of symmetry of x equals 4, as previously stated. I hope the video helped you realize the uh, relationship between the standard form and vertex form and the different ways in which they are used to graph quadratics.